Here we're going to look right now at how you can find the length of an arc in a circle, like the one that's highlighted in yellow there, given the central angle and the radius of that circle. All right, now there's, we're going to start by writing a proportion for this, because if you think about this, it should be proportional. Think about if you were, if you had this where this was halfway around here. So if you were halfway around the circle, the distance around the outside would be half the circumference, and the angle would be half the angle. If you're three quarters of the way around, the angle would be three quarters of the way around. So it should be proportional there. So we're going to set up a proportion and uh, use that to find any arc length for any angle. In other words, what I mean by proportion is the length of the arc around the outside. So that arc length divided by the full circumference, all right, so this part divided by that whole distance should be the same as, same ratio as this angle out of that full turn. So the central angle divided by a full turn, full rotation. Now I'll put some variables in that in there for that. For this arc length, we have that arc that's marked off in yellow there. We're going to use an A. So we have A. Full circumference, well the full circumference, the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius. That's, that's how you find the circumference of a circle using that formula there that you're likely familiar with. The central angle is theta, and the full turn angle here, it depends on how you do this, what you're going to get. If you are measuring this angle in degrees, then we would have to put 360 degrees under here. Now you can, you can solve the formula for any one of the variables you want, right? If you wanted A, there's A. If you want theta to find that, or if you want the radius, there's the radius. You could take that formula and solve it for any one of the three. If we isolate the arc length there, what we're going to get is a formula that looks like arc length is theta times 2 pi r over 360. Now that would be a formula that you could use if your angle is in degrees, but what we're going to do is we're going to write the formula in radians because you're going to get a much simpler formula. So let's write something where we're not using that in degrees, we're going to write this in radians. A full turn is 2 pi radians. Now the reason that this is nice is because on this side we got 2 pi on the bottom because it's part of the how you find the circumference and we have 2 pi over here. If we simplify this, if we multiply both sides by 2 pi, 2 pi, it uh, really simplifies both sides. We get arc length divided by the radius is the angle. Right now, by definition, that actually is how you know radians are defined. The angle in radians is how many radii around the outside you are. So if you had two radii, radii, two radiuses here, and divided by that one radius, you'd get two. All right. So that's kind of that formula matches up with our definition of what uh, radians are. You could rearrange that formula so that it said arc length is r times theta or theta times r. So either one of those, same as a formula, that any kind of formula like that that you've had before. So if you want to approach finding the length of an arc in a circle, you can do it a couple different ways. You can just start from the basic first principles proportion each time, or if you happen to be, uh, if you happen to know that, you can use that formula because it's probably simpler to work with. So your choice. So let's try an example here. I'm going to find the length of that arc. Method one, use a proportion. So we'll set up the proportion again. The length of the arc divided by 2 pi times 20 centimeters. That's got to be the same as 110 degrees out of 360 degrees. Since this angle's in degrees, if I'm using a proportion, I can just write this side both in degrees, as long as they're both in the same measurement. If I'm going to solve that, I get CD equals 110 times 2 pi times 20 divided by 360. Let's get a calculator in here. 110 times 2 times pi times 20 
divided by 360. That's going to give me 38.4, depending on what kind of accuracy you want. CD is roughly 38.4, and it would be centimeters, because that unit was centimeters. Now, the other way you could do it, of course, is to use that formula. If you're going to use that formula, it's important to realize that this formula, I'll go back for a second, this formula assumed that we measured the angle in radians because that full turn we put in 2 pi. We didn't put in 360 there. So if you're going to use that formula in this situation, when we set it up here, we're going to have to make the, the conversion. We can still start with that formula, but we'll write the angle. The theta has got to be, theta is 110 degrees, but that's going to be equal to 110 times pi over 180. That's the angle in radians, right? 110 degrees is 110 pi over 180. If we're going to now find this, that's the value we have to use. You're going to find it looks actually quite similar to what we had before. All right, so arc length's what we don't know. Leave that as our variable. The radius we know is 20. And we're going to multiply that by our angle in radians, which is 110 pi over 180. So you can go to your calculator and uh, work with this the same way. Or you can give an exact value by working with this, uh, you know, simplifying this the way you likely know how to do already. Say this 20 and this 180, if you divide that, you can get a 9 on the bottom. So if you want an exact value for this, you could just say it's 110 pi over 9 centimeters. Or you could go to your calculator and get the approximate answer. Let's clear this first. 20 times 110 pi divided by 180 gives you 38.4, same as we had before. All right, let's look now at a slightly different situation where uh, the angle is the thing that we're looking for. So in this situation here, we want to know what the central angle is for a given diameter and arc length. So if that's our diameter, which is 12 feet, and we're asking now, what's the angle if we're going to go 21 feet around the outside now? I'm going to just kind of draw it over here, even though I'm not actually sure how far to draw it. That's my estimate, though, just looking at the picture. All right, so I'm going to take this away just so we don't get mixed up in all the things here. Our diameter was, diameter was 12. So our radius is six feet. So I'm gonna label this as six, and our arc length there is 21. Now, a couple different ways you can get this. One is simply using that formula that we developed before. If this is our A value, our arc length, this is our radius here, and what we're looking for is that central angle, which we can call theta again. We can use that formula that we had, arc length, is r times theta, or solve it for theta. Theta is arc length over radius. If you sub in your values, it's pretty quick and easy to get it. Theta is 21 over 6. Or you can reduce that or divide it or whatever. You're going to get 7 over 2 or 3.5. Now, it's not 7 pi over 2 or, or 3.5 pi. It's just 7 over 2 or 3.5 radians. All right, that's what the angle is. In radians, you can use this formula. It's really quick and easy, and your angle is in radians. Now, something that's important to remember here is if you have an angle of 3.5 radians, it means you've gone 3.5 radii around the circle, right? 21 is three and a half of these. So that's all that means. Now, if you needed an angle in degrees, You'd have to start with, let's say, our 7 over 2 there. That's in radians, so we would have to multiply by 180 degrees over pi if we really wanted it in degrees. You can go to your calculator for that, because simplifying this to get an exact value degree measure is not usually that useful. We want 7 times 180 divided by 2 pi in brackets because otherwise it's only dividing by one of them so it's about 200 degrees all right 200.5 degrees the approximate value all right so that's it that's the relationship between the arc length of a circle 
the central angle and the radius.